Peace and blessings to you. Welcome to the Trust in the Lord Hour. I am Secretary Septimus Wilson, and it is an honor and a pleasure to greet you this morning. First, I'd like to tell you that Pastor Manning and Mother Manning are off on a vacation much deserved. They work very hard, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So therefore, for them to get away and renew themselves in the Word of God and rest their bodies, it is a wonderful delight that they have this opportunity to do so. And we here at the family, uh, our hearts are with them, our prayers, and we miss them very, very dearly. So we are looking forward to having Pastor return, renewed and refreshed as usual, because God is speaking to him all day and all night. And undoubtedly, he would have something very, very wonderful to tell us and something wonderful, wonderfully uh, inviting for us to view and go to the Lord in prayer. So at this time, I'd like to say to you, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. This is a day that you have made and all you do is designed for us. You are the one who have given us the foundation of life, the foundation of truth. We are to trust in you because you have asked us to. You have told us, believe in Jesus and you will live. Lord Jesus, we understand that a challenge, we are challenged each day. We can't always feel that we can trust, but we are determined to grow with our relationship with you. So Heavenly Father, thank you for these moments of your precious love and your kind heart that you have decided that we are important to you. And we honor that in Jesus' name, amen. This morning, um, I have been called to break out of the comfort zone. The camera is very unfriendly to me or maybe I'm unfriendly to it. However, you and I will have a conversation and I pray that whatever I tell you today that you will gain some benefit and I pray that you will stay with me for the next 28 minutes. Thank you for joining us today here at Outlaw World Ministry. We are God's people and we have a pastor who loves us very much. And without him, we cannot exist. So let's go to Psalms, and I'd like to read a few scriptures for you, a few lines. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statues, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it, and my whole heart Make me go to the path of my commandments, or thy commandments, rather. For therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not unto covenantlessness. Turn away mine eyes from the beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. I'd like to say to you, this is all very new to me. Prior to coming into uh, the vision of Outlaw, I really had no idea of prayer, not really. Um, I didn't understand God totally, but I knew, I knew that I needed God. I came from a background of a Jehovah Witnesses, and I don't believe I learned very much, actually. Or what I learned, I was unable to apply it to my life. And um, because of that, I found myself traveling to various churches and seeking God, as seeking the, the information I knew existed, however, I didn't know what it was. But I knew it was the truth. And I came about out loud one day when I was walking out of my bedroom preparing for work and I heard a woman's voice first. And the voice said, all Jesus, all the time. 
And shortly after that, I heard this very strong voice. This man spoke the truth. I can't remember exactly what he said, but what he said applied to my situation. And then I started to watch the TV show frequently, and I discovered there was a school which existed here, and they were looking for uh, sponsors to sponsor students. And I decided to sponsor a student, so I sent a check, and uh, I got a reply to thank me for the check. And then, as I watched the programs, I became interested in coming down to view the service um, live. And I found something very interesting. Each time I planned to be here, there was a, a situation that developed and I was unable to make it. And I recall at least three, on three occasions, I was actually on the train and something happened and I became, I was very close to, to the location and I, could, I didn't arrive. So about the third time, I arrived by taxi and ironically, I ended up in the church next door. And I, I, I'm thinking to myself, this, is, this is, isn't the right place. So I came out of the church and I looked to the side and there was this huge sign that said, Atla World Ministries. And I came into the building and the first person I saw was one of the mothers, Mother One. She greeted me and she says to me, why are you late? It was as if she expected me and I belonged here. I felt that when I walked into the building. And I can tell you, I've never felt at home with the Lord. You could feel the energy in the building. So pastor preached. And then I discovered there was a Sabbath school. I joined the Sabbath school. And uh, of course I had my Jehovah Witness Bible with me. And on a man upon his teaching, he asked me, what is that in your hand? I said, it's the Holy Bible. And he looked at it and he said, this is not a Bible. This is a Bible. And I can tell you, I received my very first Bible from the Honorable James David Manning. And I can tell you, when I opened the book, I've never saw so much information about the Lord and about who I am as his creation and about the history of mankind. So it piqued my interest. And fortunately, I started to come to the services often and frequently. And I believe about the third service or fourth service, I joined the church immediately. I felt that this was the place for me because I needed to learn about God. And so here I am. I've been to many trials, and um, when I joined, I had no idea as to what to really expect. I just expected to learn about God, which I have. But Pastor Manning, had, what did he do? Well, at that time, he had taken upon the community, and he was discussing with the community and the people of, of the, with the vision that you should have, be businessmen, you should have your own home, you should own your property, you should be a leader in the church, leader in the community. Ah, what a foundation to start from. Leadership is a powerful tool. Leadership and families bring wholeness to communities. And with that, we have the opportunity to grow and really illustrate the strength of mankind. So various meetings, he, he brought people in and he taught them uh, banking and how to repair your credit score, all of these things. And the church was always overrun with individuals. We had so many people here. You didn't have a place to sit. Pastor Manning not only taught us about finances, but he also taught us the the fact that we needed to trust in the Lord in order to acquire these things. And in order to trust in the Lord, we needed to learn something. Well, what do we need to learn? We're reading the Bible. But reading the Bible doesn't really give you all you need. It just gives you the instructions. You need to apply those principles to your life. 
that is a challenge because you read a scripture and you need to relate it to other things that's happening in the Bible in order to understand what's being told to you. So it was required that we attend church frequently. And during this time, we worshiped on Sundays. Sundays were very long, but very, very, very scheduled and very structured. And within those Sundays, we would have several services. We would have um, the Sabbath school worship. And then at that time, I believe we had uh, the women's, the Barrett Women's Association, the singles women. And we had an opportunity to really see how we fit within the scriptures, how married women should conduct themselves and with their families, and how single women can become virtuous women by their behavior. And by the way, we had a role model, or we do have a role model. Her name is um, Mother Manning. We call her Mother Manning, but it's Elizabeth Sarah Manning. The voice that I heard all Jesus all the time. She's an excellent role model for the women and she teaches us grace, mannerism. And these things you would say, well I have those things, but we don't know what we really look like unless we have someone to mirror us. First of all, we, we want to conform our lives to God, the way he does things. We are taking on a new spirit a spirit of everlasting life so that we are no longer like the world. We are separate from the world. So we dress, we walk, we talk, and we think differently from the rest of the world. And that is something that you just don't conceive immediately. But as you continue to read God's word, you start to learn these things. So again, I found it fascinating that not only did I get the word from the book of life, and we, I was able to also learn virtue of um, vital information as it pertains to living everyday life. Everything was applied from the Bible to my life so that I could use it. So as I've grown in the ministry, I have realized that Without coming into this ministry, I may not be where I am today. As a matter of fact, I've realized that without the Lord, without learning about the Lord, that I would not exist. Because when I walked through those doors, my life was totally chaotic. I was really looking for an opportunity to better my life, to have someone to depend on for strength and courage. And I found it here. Pastor Manning teaches only the Word of God. And when I walked through those doors, I did not really understand what it, what, what it meant. It meant to change my life. I had to take on a new personality. So with that, I can say that trusting in the Lord has been a real challenge because I didn't understand what trusting in the Lord was. I knew that people would say, put your faith in God. Well, I'm putting my faith in God because I want him to do something for me. But trusting in the Lord, I'm putting myself in his hands. So I'm going to do what he wants me to do, not what I want to do. And that was very difficult because when I walked through those doors, I had a different lifestyle. I, um, at that time, I had, um, I was a coach and I had a, a, a walk-in clinic, uh, which required me to be unavailable on Wednesdays, which is worship night, uh, prayer night, and on Sundays, which were the days uh, that we would go to various locations and do road racing. And so I had to drop that. And, and it was very interesting because I thought, well, why should I need to drop my activities uh, that I, something I adhered to prior to coming into the church? But then pastor pointed out that uh, Jesus and his disciples, when they walked the earth, 
uh, Jesus told them that they needed to give up homes, family, uh, money, friends, and leave everything and follow him. And I'm saying to myself, well, how do you do that? You just don't do anything. You just come to church and that's all. But that's, that wasn't it. It wasn't about the church. It was about giving yourself over to whatever it is that the Lord has for you to do. And it took quite a while for me to understand that. But I can tell you, as I started to transform into this new person, I could see that everything the pastor said to us was true. Things started to manifest themselves in my life. My life became lighter versus the darkness I had when I walked through the door. I have a better outlook. I have more confidence in myself. I have more patience than I ever had. Um, I'm at a point now where I know that, that I'm in God's hands at all times and I should never be afraid of man. And at that time, I was very, very uncomfortable with myself. I very, very much needed some strength. And I got that strength through the illustration of Pastor Manning. He is not only a talker. He doesn't just speak. He does. Whatever he does, he sets an example for us to follow and thus make it more realistic, more applicable that God is alive. He prays incessantly. He prays for us. He show, has shown us how to pray. When I walked through those doors, I didn't know how to pray. But because he is so persistent in who he is, I have learned to thank the Lord, to thank God for all he has done for me. Well, prior to that, I always <laughs> leaned upon my own understanding because what else could I do? I mean, I, I, I was a, a single woman. Uh, my, I went to work. I tried to live properly. I tried to do, be nice to people and I affiliated with, uh, you know, people whom I thought were good character. And it wasn't until I started learning the spiritual aspect of who I was that my eyes became open. The people were nice, but suddenly I could hear them saying to me, why are you going to that church? Oh, forget about church today. Uh, let's go to the event, you know, the event we usually attend on Sunday. Um, and I, I started to realize that they were actually pulling me away from something that I really wanted. I wanted to learn about God. I wanted my life to be better. I knew they had to be better than the, the environment, you know, the murders and the killings and the drugs and the, the lies. I wanted to be someplace in my spirit where I could decipher the truth. And so when has to display the fact that God says that you sometimes or all the time you must separate yourself as the disciples did. They left their families. They left their homes. I realized that I had to depart from some of my association. Actually, eventually it was everyone. Everyone. Um, I had to depart because I saw myself growing in one way, and of course they were the same way, and that's where I left. So um, I had to separate myself. That was very challenging. First of all, I no longer um, associated with my previous peers, and I only focused primarily on the word coming from God, coming from the pulpit, coming from Pastor Manny. And I affiliated with my brothers and sisters here in Atla. Of course, most of them are families. And I found myself alone again after worship. However, I got pointers on how to handle that. God said, keep me in focus. Don't look to the left or to the right. I am your focus. I am your foundation. I am the one who leads you. And as I became more comfortable with being with myself, 
I started to learn more about myself. Number one, you must know thyself because the truth will set you free. And I really learned that I was totally, totally in danger of being consumed by the world and manipulated because I didn't have God in my life. So therefore, I am so humble to sit here today and say God truly does save lives. God truly does want you to survive the calamity that's, up, that's upon us. This situation we are living in right now, we cannot continue to live this way. The chaos, the lies, the manipulation, the trickery, the violence, the hatred, the dismay that we have. We must go to God and seek His vision, seek His words. We need His protections. But the problem is this. God had said He appointed a shepherd for us. And this, the shepherd was to watch over us and protect us. James David Manning, in this case, is our shepherd. And I wish I could find the scripture for you. However, there is a scripture um, that represents what God had said. But um, one second, one second. It's in Ezekiel. Ezekiel um, 34:22, and they shall no more be prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. Verse 23, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. So thank God we have a shepherd, James David Manning. He watches over us. He feeds us the word, the word of God, the word of strength, all of the things that we need to survive the calamity that's coming upon us, all the things to help us to be saved. Lord Jesus, I didn't know anything about tithing, giving back. But praise God, I was taught how to tithe. I didn't know the blessing of tithing. But through the word of God, I have learned that what he gives us does not belong to us. It belongs to him. And we are to distribute it accordingly. So we give our tithes and offerings so that programs like this can reach you. So that you can get the word and the word can continue to spread. God is a healer. God still exists. He is here. He's the power. He is the one that we should seek first. And seek he first, the kingdom of God, and all other things will be added to us. So the tithe and the offering, I've learned. I knew nothing about it. Thank you, Jesus, for that. I knew nothing about prayer. Oh my God, thank you so much. Because I can fall on my knees, and Pastor Man has recommended at least three minutes, but we were praying much longer than that. You know, when you start talking to the Lord, you've got so much to say to Him. And I'm so grateful that I can go to the Lord and talk to Him, and tell Him, and pour my heart out. And, and, and be grateful for, for the fact that I still exist and I exist long enough to learn about him. Thank you, Pastor Manning, for your, your diligence, your faithfulness to the Lord, because you are the Lord's servant and God has ordained you to teach the word. Today, I would like to say to you, find a leader, find a shepherd, Find a real one that's going to teach God word, God's word, one who is ordained, one who believes in God and lives according to the word. He's not just a preacher. He is a shepherd, and the shepherd seeks his sheep. And he goes out, and he ensures that you have the proper rules and the proper uh, tools to survive. So. He's teaching 
constantly. And all you need to do is listen. Listen to the word, trust in the word, but practice the word, apply it to your life. That's a challenge. So it's going to take a trial and error, but you must also trust in God and know that he is your savior. Again, I like to say, um, again, Psalms 119, 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Never, never, never leave God's word. Always, always seek the Lord. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. Teach me, Lord, your statutes, so I can become more understanding, so that I can develop a better relationship with you, a closer relationship with you a sustainable relationship with you so that I can teach others the word, Lord Jesus. The word is alive, alive and moving to and fro. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give me understanding and I should keep the law. The law is critical. Without the law, you don't have understanding. So get the law. Understanding is critical. Apply it to your life to sustain your life so that we can grow closer to the Lord. I shall observe it with my whole heart. God can read your heart. He knows exactly what we need prior to asking. However, we must ask. He says, ask and you shall receive. You must believe in order that he should give. And God is a wonderful option for everlasting life, but he's the only option for everlasting life. You and I both know the truth when we hear it. Oftentimes we are not interested because it requires work and commitment. I say to you today, commit yourself to the word, commit yourself to the Lord, and you will forever be pleased because the Lord's desire is to please you and to serve you and to save you. He wants us all to be saved because after all, he gave his son on behalf of us. So understand that it's critical today to make a decision. You don't have tomorrow to decide whether or not you are going to give your life over to God. It is an investment. It's worth trying. Nothing else is working. God has promised us everlasting life only if we believe and we go through him. He is our savior. He is our foundation. He is our substance. I just like to say to you, peace and blessing to you. May God continue to be with you and may you continue to seek God. Thank you for your time today and I pray I've said something that will help you. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon. Uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the Word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly, sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be like led by the Word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.